I'm pretty sure this is gonna be the best video ever. I know the Leafs won and everything, but you seem like really chipper considering Canada lost. Yeah, but now I'm sitting on a bouncy ball instead of a computer chair, so it's way- God. Oh! Are you hurt? No, I just have hurt-like symptoms. Ah! And then- Yes! Please, dude! What a great school! Dude! Crazy throwing waffles. Woo! Who are you? Optimus Prime! Okay, wow. Seriously though, it is way more fun than a computer chair. Leafs win 7-3 over the Tampa Bay Lightning. And there was another game going on that kind of went a little less fortunately, so I'm not gonna bring it up. Oh, I'll do something. Rather than talk about all the goals, let's go through some key points. One, the Leafs recover from a brutal start. Very good on the recovery, but how many times has that brutal start happened so far this season? Stop it! Two, holy crap, Joffrey Lupul. Four points and had an amazing game against Tampa last time too. In fact, Lupul is tied for the third highest point total in the NHL after this game with Steven Stan. Amcos, 44 points. One point behind Kessel, he's got 45, and just two points behind Claude Giroux and Henrik Sedin with 46. They got him for Boschemann! Speaking of which, just a few hours before the game, the Anaheim Ducks decided to do another trade with the Leafs. Why? Why? Because that always works out awesome for them. Getting a little off topic from the game, but the Leafs trade struggling forward Luca Caputi away for struggling forward Nicolas Deschamps. They, they... Wow. I was gonna redo that, but I'm so ashamed I'm leaving it in. Okay, I'm just gonna put it on the screen so you know who I'm talking about. Nicholas Deschamps, Nicholas Deschamps, sure. Despite his really unfortunate performance, sad to see Luca Caputi go because we saw how much potential he had and then he just kept getting hurt and that'll hurt your career. So best of luck in Anaheim to Luca Caputi. I'm really gonna miss saying that song and welcome to the jungle, Nicholas Deschamps. De De Hello, Nicholas. Now, regarding this game, I want to talk about Daryl Boyce and Steve Down. Now, here come the comments. Steve, you have a man crush on Daryl Boyce. Guilty. But it's so hard not to like a player like Daryl Boyce because like teammate Mike Brown, he's a honey badger because he cares so much that he doesn't care. He's also proof that Twitter's such a powerful tool. Fans were already starting to like him and then he just posts his inside out freaking nose on the internet. And then a reporter goes, oh, Daryl Boyce is going to miss next game. He responded on Twitter going, no, I'm not missing any time. And what's crazy about how messed up his nose was if you've seen the picture like looking down he probably had his phone at his chest and was looking through his nose to type and busted up nose aside one thing that the Leafs have always always lacked is no one will go to the net and Boyce does that and sure enough that's exactly how he scored in this game his first of the season and the game winning goal then enter Steve Downey and whenever I think of Steve Downey I go there's the level-headed logically thinking individual I want on my team I would never think oh this guy's a loose cannon that has no control of his emotions whatsoever and the tweet of the night comes from my good friend the Justin Fisher there's his Twitter handle right there follow him for this tweet Steve Downey is the kind of guy who has the talent to be a solid contributor and is too dumb to employ it properly. Now, I've mentioned this before, I really like Guy Boucher as an NHL coach, but can you imagine if John Tortorella was still the coach of the Lightning? He'd have choked this guy out by now. I'm gonna try coming up with an analogy for Downey, and only some of you will get it, but those who get it really will. Remember Pokemon the Animated Series? And Ash has Charmander and he won some fight and then he evolves into Charmeleon. And Charmeleon's great, but he's a liability to Ash's Pokemon team because he won't listen. Steve Downey is Charmeleon. The Flyers got rid of him and they picked him with their first round pick. Doesn't Downey scream a Flyers player? He does, he hits, he plays rough, he scores, he has skill, but he's too nuts. And I got a lot of negative feedback for saying this in a video in my first season of videos five seasons ago. So you're gonna have an awfully hard time convincing me he's gonna change. And I'm not just trying to diss Steve Downey, okay? Before this game against the Leafs, he had seven points in his last three games. Again, he has the strength, the speed, the skill, all the necessary tools if he would only use them. Instead of getting an unsportsmanlike minor, a roughing minor, and a 10 minute misconduct, just seconds after your team falls behind by just one goal in the second. Have you seen the Leafs PK? You can come back from that. And last part of that rant there, good restraint by FNUF for not fighting Downey because FNUF plays way more minutes than him. Why is the ref stopping Ollie and then Boyce from fighting though? Because here's a clip of Shen later in the game fighting Nate Thompson and the refs jump in kind of early. Ref's gonna get clocked. Accidents happen, dude. Look out. I digress. The Leafs begin 2012 
with an excellent win, 7-3 over Tampa Bay. Question of the game, Kadri picking up another assist in this one. He's got five points in nine games. What have you thought of him since he's come up from the Marlies? Two, Matt Fratton, just 10 points so far this season, but his second multi-point game, what have you thought of him so far? And three, didn't mention it all video long, but Colt Nor placed on waivers. So Colt Nor placed on waivers the day after Luca Caputi gets traded. You smell something? And if you do, what's that something? And that'll be the SteveDangle.com poll, so check that out on SteveDangle.com. Follow me on Twitter, like my page on Facebook because I'm out of spots for friends, but I still love you, and I'll see you next time.